Hello, uh, today's the 31st of January, 2022. I was thinking about the misinformation around COVID death statistics in the UK and the idea that this number that the ONS put out of people who died without any listed pre-existing conditions on their death certificates, that that means that COVID deaths have been over-reported. Uh, it's not true. COVID deaths haven't been over-reported. Uh, using it that way is misinformation. But I was thinking, is it new misinformation? And it turns out it's not. So everything old is new again. And in this case, it's recycled from the exact same strategy in the U.S. in August and September of 2020. So I want to review that in this very brief video. Hi, I'm Prof. Greg. I've spent my career in biomedical research, first in industry after my training, and then more recently as an academic. Uh, today, I want to address the, uh, the issue of this misinformation around COVID deaths. And in particular, I want to address what I think is an interesting coincidence that the way COVID deaths have been misused in the UK is not, in fact, at all new. It's not at all new. So let's take a look at it. So it turns out that in August of 2020, the CDC in the United States, the Center for Disease Control, put out some new information. They started tabulating deaths from COVID, which also had no listed pre-existing conditions. And what happened, predictably, but uh, somehow this wasn't anticipated, what happened was that right-wing media in the United States picked up on this and claimed that COVID deaths have been vastly overreported. In this case, the claim was that only 9,210 Americans had died from COVID alone, and the rest had other pre-existing conditions. And they used this to argue against lockdowns, and they used this to argue against mandates. And this wasn't just the Gateway Pundit. This was picked up on social media in all the predicted ways. And in this case, the refrain was that only 6% of the 153,504 reported American deaths were due directly to COVID. Sound familiar? Yeah, it should. And in this case, it was retweeted by American politicians, in particular by Donald Trump. I found this tweet where he retweets someone else and says, this week, the CDC quietly updated the COVID number to admit that only 6% of the 153,504 deaths recorded actually died. And then it goes on in the usual predictable way. Of course, there was pushback. And in this case, the pushback was from fact checkers who pointed out that no, that is not an appropriate use of those deaths, that's not an appropriate interpretation of that statistic. Pre-existing conditions, other things that people have when they die are recorded because that's how deaths are recorded. They're recorded that way so that people can understand when people die what contributed to their deaths. And in the case of people who die from COVID, many of them, like many other people who die from any other cause, have pre-existing conditions. So none of this is surprising. Pretty soon, British politicians were tweeting about it, tweeting about the CDC admission, some admission in this case, admitting that 94% of the people who died with COVID had underlying health conditions. Again, this should sound familiar. And this was noticed by ordinary Britons who responded or retweeted about the situation in the UK. And instead of referring to the CDC, they were referring to the Office of National Statistics and their data, which was already available and had similar information about pre-existing conditions. Not so surprisingly, the same people who made those arguments with the CDC data in 2020 made the same arguments with the ONS data in 2022. It's not so surprising, is it? It also perhaps explains why the FOI request was worded as it was. Now, 
Before ending this video, I want to give a shout out to a couple of my viewers who pointed out in the comments that Dr. John Campbell, on the same day he made his Freedom of Information Revelation video, made a second video. And at the beginning of that video, he said the quiet part out loud. Well, warm welcome. It's still Thursday, the 20th of January. I do hope you got the chance to look at that video, which shows that by some calculations, we're overcounting deaths by a factor of uh, seven, eight or nine. I was going to do that together with this video, but it would have got a bit uh, long. So I've done it as a separate. So we can see here that Dr. Campbell was clearly saying that the ONS may have overrepresented reports of COVID deaths. They hadn't. He made a point of pointing it out to his viewers so that they would go watch his other video recorded previously that day where he makes that claim. So that's where I'm going to end it. If you've enjoyed this content, give it a like or a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have other things that you think I should be aware of, content that topics that you would like me to cover. I'll see you in the next video and stay safe, everybody.